Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, so, I, uh, I am, uh, drowning in tags at the moment, um, or at least by my standards I'm drowning in tags. Um, I don't usually have this many tags backlisted, because I'm not tagged that often, um, because I'm kind of a recluse, so people don't think to tag me. Um, but, uh, not that I have a problem with that, uh, just, that's just how it, how it happens. Um, so, uh, I figured that, uh, the best response to having a huge backlist of tags to do, um, would be to procrastinate on doing that by doing a tag that I wasn't actually tagged in. Um, so, uh, this is the Reading Habits tag. I saw it on, I saw Biblio Atlas do it. Um, I've seen many people do this tag, but it was really, uh, Biblio Atlas's video that kind of inspired me to want to do it. Um, I actually, uh, on her video was going to write, I was writing up this long comment giving all these thoughts about uh, the questions and some of her responses and stuff, and then it kind of hit me, you know, why make her read this long comment, why not just do the tag? Um, so that's what I commented on her video, I said, okay, I was gonna, I was gonna make all these, all this long comment about what you were saying, but, uh, I figure I should just probably do the tag. So, uh, anyway, this is, uh, this is my rendition of the Reading Habits tag. Um, and yeah, it's a popular tag, so it probably doesn't need much intro. Um, I don't know who created it, I, when I looked at Biblio Atlas's show notes, it just said that the creator was lost to the uh, annals of booktube, so uh, I don't know who created it. But anyway, I'm going to do it. So, uh, first question is, do you have a certain place at home for reading? Uh, I usually do end up reading uh, sitting on my bed or sitting in this chair. And sometimes I will sit on the floor. Um, I don't know what it is with me and sitting on the floor, but uh, I will read on the floor. Um, uh, but I'm flexible, you know, sometimes I will read on the futon that is out in my living room out there. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, not a specific place, but I do have places that I tend to, uh, favor where, for, uh, reading. Uh, second question, uh, bookmark or random piece of paper? Uh, either. Uh, I don't tend, I'm, have gotten out of using the bookmarks with, uh, tassels on the end because I have a cat who, uh, you know, has a has a whole apartment full of toys that I spent money on for her. Um, but of course, what she likes to play with is the tassel on the bookmark. Um, and uh, um, and uh, then I will use random pieces of paper. I will use a pencil if I I like to annotate my books. So often I will just put the pencil in the book and let that hold the place. Um, I also dog ear pages in a fix, um, which I know offends some people, but uh, it's practical. I mean, you know. Um, and, uh, I'm gonna talk in a little bit about how I, uh, don't really, uh, hold my books, the physical object of the book to be very precious. Um, but third question is, can you just stop reading or do you have to stop after a chapter or a certain amount of pages? Um, I like to stop after a certain number of pages, uh, or after a chapter. Uh, but, again, I'm flexible. If I, you know, need to rush somewhere or, or something, uh, then I will just stop wherever. Um, I prefer being able to stop at the end of a page. So, um, finish a page and then stop at the end of the last paragraph, uh, or the, at the end of the first paragraph on the next page. Um, but again, I can stop anywhere. Uh, but when I'm reading, you know, just day to day, uh, you know, I will have a certain number of pages that I set myself to read every day. Um, but if it just so happens that I reach that goal, uh, and it just so happens that after, like, two or three pages after uh, those n that number of pages, a chapter ends, then I will often read beyond my goal and get to the end of the chapter and stop there. Um, yeah, again, I'm flexible. Um, number four, do you eat or drink while reading? I don't, because uh, both of them are too distracting. Um, I will sometimes take sips of water from a water bottle when I'm reading, or, uh, coffee while I'm reading sometimes. Um, but even coffee is, um, a bit too distracting for me, and eating certainly I can't. Um, uh, you know, just the act of reaching for food and chewing while I'm trying to think just, it's not conducive to thought or focus on, uh, on the task at hand. So I don't, I don't ever eat while I'm reading, um, though I will drink on occasion. Um, Number five, multitasking. Uh, music or TV while reading? Uh, uh, neither. I can't do either. Uh, TV, it's just, if you're watching TV while you're reading, then you're focusing on two separate, you know, stories or narratives, and uh, I think that's impossible. Um, you know, uh, you can't really focus on two things at once, um, is the plain 
the plain fact. Um, music, um, again, I try sometimes. I like the idea of like having classical music playing while I read, but it just really doesn't work. Uh, it's again too distracting. You know, it's even though even if it doesn't have words, it's uh, you know it's energy that your brain is expending that's not focused on the book, and so it's distracting. Um, the most uh, sometimes with music, if I'm in a public place. Um, that's loud, uh, I will sometimes listen to Gregorian chants or like church hymns um, because there's something about them because they're uh, a cappella a lot of them and because they don't have much of a rhythm, a strong rhythm, um, it makes them much easier to read to and because the lyrics aren't in English um, makes them much less distracting and makes them kind of uh, good for blotting out excess noise, um, I think. Uh, something kind of ethereal about them that does a good job of that. Um, uh, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, not usually music or TV. Um, number six, uh, one book at a time or several at once? So I have a complicated relationship with this question. Um, I like the idea of reading multiple books at once, uh, mainly because I often find while I'm reading one book, I will long to read other books that are sitting on my shelf. Uh, and it will frustrate me to be finishing up this other book, which I, I may be enjoying, but still, I may also be very eager to get to other books. And uh, to be, you know, almost sallied with having to finish this book before I start these other books can get frustrating because I, I mean, often I find myself wanting to be reading everything on my shelf all at once. Um, and that's very frustrating. So I like the idea of being able to read multiple books at once so that I'm not experiencing that feeling as much. But what that often uh, degenerates into is to me trying to read five books at once and then not really finishing any of them uh, and then just picking one of them out and finishing that one. And so then I have read, you know, one book and have like four or five unfinished books sitting on my shelf, um, which I never like. Um, and also... On top of that, there is just kind of the mental clutter from reading multiple books at once. Um, I know that that's an ambiguous term, but I just find that when I'm trying to re juggle multiple books in my head at once, it's more difficult for me to read each one individually very deeply um, because I'm distracted by the other books that I'm reading. Um, so, yeah, I want to be able to read more books at once, but uh, I don't, I'm not very good at it. Uh, right now, I'm managing it. Right now, I'm reading a general work of nonfiction, um, which is actually pretty light. Um, and then I'm reading a book of poetry. I'm reading the poems of John Donne. And then I'm reading the Gospel of Matthew, which is a, a narrative, um, not a work of fiction per se, but it is, it is a narrative. It's a story, so it, it kind of has uh, a sense of reading fiction to it. Um, so uh, that is working, I think because the three books are all so different. Um, and I'm, again, I'm going to try to work on that over the summer. You know, if I can read a fiction, a nonfiction, and a poetry all at once, maybe that'll work. Um, I don't know. But yeah, so uh, anyway, I have a complicated relationship with this question, as I, as I began with. But um, so yeah, uh, generally, though, I am reading only one book, generally. If you catch me on any given day, it's probably one book I'm working on. Um, alright, number seven. Uh, do you read at home or do you read everywhere? Uh, generally I read at home, but, uh, I will read in cars, on road trips, I will read on planes, um, I have read on trains as well. I do find it a bit more difficult to read in cars or on trains, um, just because there are distractions around, uh, with the, even just the bumpiness of the car or the train can be a bit distracting to me. Um, but I can usually get past it and read there. Um, but generally I do prefer just reading at home. Uh, because, again, of those mental distractions that you run into in the outside world uh, make it more difficult to read. Um, number eight, uh, reading out loud or silently in your head. Uh, I read silently in my head. Uh, I do sub-vocalize everything I read. Um, I'm very detail-oriented when I read and very deliberate when I read, and I want to read deeply when I read, so um, I do sort of recite everything in my head when I read it, which I know makes it very slow. I am a painfully slow reader, but that's just how I am. I have tried to work on that unsuccessfully in the past. Um, 
Number nine, uh, do you read ahead or even skip pages? I do not. Um, I like to keep a sense of mystery. Uh, if, if it's a plot-driven book, I like to keep a sense of mystery. And if it's not a plot-driven book, if it's like a work of literary fiction, then there's not much point to skipping ahead, because there's probably not any kind of, um, you know, big twist at the end anyway. Um, if it's a work of non-fiction and there's a section of the book that I think I will find particularly interesting, I may skip ahead and read a little bit. Um, that's not quite the same thing. I, I, I think the question is targeted at fiction, um, so I don't, you know, I don't think that really matters. Um, and, you know, in non-fiction, you know, it's not, it's not, there are no twists in non-fiction, anyway. Um, uh, number 10, uh, breaking the spine or keeping it, like, new. Uh, I used to be very precious about my books. Uh, I never wrote in them. I never bent the covers or broke the spine or anything. Um, but in the past couple years, I have embraced, uh, the joys of destroying books. Um, I annotate, I annotate a ton now. Um, I love breaking spines. I actually think... Breaking the spine is actually one of my favorite parts of reading a book now, of uh, reading a really long book. Um, and I will be happily bend the covers. I have even uh, taken some paperbacks and bent one of the covers all the way around to just read the one page. Um, I do that sometimes if the book permits, if the physical uh, uh, book permits. Um, so yeah, I, I don't hold my books sacred anymore as physical objects. Um, you know, because... Uh, you go to a used bookstore and you kind of realize that every book eventually is going to dissolve into dust anyway. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I like to break books. <laughs> um, number 11. Uh, do you write in your books? Yes, I do. Quite a bit. Um, I, when I'm reading poetry, I will underline lines that I find particularly striking or moving or thought-provoking. Um, <clears throat> I don't generally comment much on poetry. Uh, except where, like, an image I find very striking, um, or, or an idea that gives me a thought, but, um, but I'm not very good at reading poetry critically, so I don't annotate on poetry that much, but, um, in, uh, fiction, I will underline, uh, lines that I like, and I will comment on what's happening on, uh, you know, the, the, the themes of the story, I will make comments on that, and comments on the characters and what's going on, and, and things like that. Just kind of things to keep me engaged, basically. Um, nothing that, you know, would be particularly interesting to find if you weren't me, basically. Uh, but just basically to keep myself engaged. Um, and then with nonfiction. Nonfiction is, uh, the genre where I definitely, uh, annotate the most. Um, so with nonfiction books, especially dense nonfiction books, um, I like to actually write out, uh, ideas from the book in my own words in the margin. So if there's a paragraph and the author has just, uh, put forth, uh, an argument or an idea, I will, um, just very briefly, and in, you know, note-taking language, um, write out the idea in my own words. Uh, because that will help me to remember it, that, uh, helps me to understand it, because I've had to put it in my own words. Um, and it just, again, keeps me engaged. That's the whole kind of thing with me and annotating. I just want to be engaged while I'm reading. Um, and I uh, want to hold on to as much as, of what I read as possible, basically. Um, uh, so, yeah, I do annotate quite a bit. Um, and then, uh, number 12, who do you tag? Uh, I think this is such an old tag, I'm guessing everyone who I would tag has done it. Um, but if, uh, anyone hasn't, then, uh, please do it. Um, so yeah, anyway, that was the, uh, reading habits tag, and, uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. Bye!